Welcome to A Recipe Reborn, featuring your favorite foods from Final Fantasy XIV. Hello, my name is Lemon Drop, and I develop recipes by combining real-life culinary inspiration with the in-game recipe, description, thumbnail, geography, and lore. If you're into XIV and food, please subscribe and click the bell for a new episode every week. Today I am making lemon waffles. This is the second week in a row of both breakfast food and new recipes from Patch 5.2. You might be thinking, but Lemon, I don't have a waffle iron, and I'm definitely not here to tell you to get one. In addition to waffles, I developed a second recipe that uses almost exactly the same ingredients, but is cooked in a muffin pan instead of a waffle iron, which I will show you after the waffles. I would love to be able to tell you that these waffles are from Il Meg or Calusia, but the ingredients from this patch are all over the place. 50% of these are from Norvrant, and 30% are from Heidelin. Naturally, I wondered how that could be. Is Feo Ul bootlegging ingredients between dimensions on the side? Are we introducing non-native species by moving back and forth between the source and the first, aside from the Sky Builder materials? Unfortunately, I don't have the answer to these questions. If you have any theories, please let me know in the comments. I'm going to start by showing you my iron. I got a small one to stay under budget. This one makes one 4-inch or 10-centimeter waffle. I'm going to let it preheat while I prepare the batter, which is similar to buttermilk pancakes. Buttermilk is only available at my local grocery store in 1 liter cartons, which is way more than I usually need, so I regularly substitute it with whole milk mixed with a little lemon juice, which in this case fits perfectly. I'm mixing all the dry ingredients together, and I'm using baking soda, which is activated when combined with an acid such as lemon juice. Together they create carbon dioxide, and that's what makes the batter puff and rise. What that means though is that I can't leave this batter to rest, or the chemical reaction tapers off and I miss out on all the bubbles. You can make these ahead of time for brunch guests or a weekend family meal. I recommend cooking and storing them, and when it's time to serve, reheat them in the oven or toaster. Now it's time to combine the wet with the dry ingredients and stir until they're just combined. Lumps are okay here. I oil the iron after cooking each waffle just to make sure there is absolutely no sticking. If you ever did a baking soda and vinegar volcano experiment in school, you know how quickly things die down and cleaning up a stuck waffle can really mess up your plans. My iron took about 4 minutes to get to this point of golden brown. If you want to make lacy edge style waffles like in the thumbnail, just use a little less batter. For me, a full waffle was a quarter cup of batter and a lacy edge waffle was half that. I'm going to set these aside to make what I'm going to call lemon pancake puffs. If you follow me on social media, you probably already know that I love making Dutch baby pancakes, which are known by many names and originate from Dutch pilgrims to Pennsylvania. If you're not familiar, they're similar to a popover or Yorkshire pudding, but sweet instead of savory. These have all the same ingredients as the waffles, but contain no leavener, so no baking soda or powder. What this means is that you can mix this batter ahead of time, let it rest and develop flavor, and then cook it whenever you're ready to eat. It's similar to crepes, except you can cook these 12 at a time instead of 1 at a time, which is exactly why I prefer making these over traditional pancakes. This batter is meant to be smooth, so I'm sifting the flour, but this is optional as long as you're willing to do a little more whisking. I normally make these in a blender and a cast iron skillet, but since the point is to minimize special equipment, I'm using the whisk and a muffin pan today. The only tricky part is that the pan needs to be preheated. After a few minutes in the oven, I pop in my butter and make sure to swirl or brush it around to prevent sticking. This batch got a little bit stuck. This recipe yields about 2 cups or 500 milliliters of batter, so I'm pouring in about 40 milliliters or just slightly more than an eighth of a cup per muffin cup. When that's done, these go in the oven on the middle rack and make sure there's no other racks above it to get in the way. They puff up a lot. That's it! Behold my breakfast buffet! I'm serving with powdered sugar and garnishing with lemon slices and mint. I'm also adding a few blackberries, which I thought would be a good color contrast, and they were cheap at my local fruit market. To give you an idea of how delicious these are, I actually ate all the food off the round plates before I realized I didn't record myself taking a bite. I didn't feel like restyling the plates, so I'll just tell you that both of these precisely fit the in-game description. Crispy on the outside, moist on the inside, with a slight hint of citrus. I think it's probably pretty easy to believe that a sweet and sour treat topped with fruit and honey is an especially memorable morning meal. Cooking 8 waffles at 4 minutes each takes 32 minutes, but cooking 12 pancake puffs takes only 15. Both are faster than traditional pancakes, so if you need to feed guests, or if you just want to make something low maintenance for a lazy morning, I highly recommend trying these out. For the full recipe and instructions, please check out the link to my website in the description below and in the card at the top of the screen. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next week for a little Ladies' Day recipe. Until then, please enjoy this video of Kubo and my friend's dog Cash pulling me all the way to the off-leash dog park.